talk about because our, our our topic is passion, and you're passionate about camel milk. Yeah. Uh, the, and and you weren't. Uh, there was a day in which you weren't all about camel milk. No. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, a, a fairly fairly recent thing. Uh, it wasn't like your child was diagnosed with autism and you went camel milk. It was many years later. Um, but you are widely considered the expert on camel milk having to do with autism. You get sent around the world places to talk about it. You've been uh, here, there, and wherever and had some adventures. Yes, it's been quite fun. And uh, actually, the latest one was I was really delighted. Um, in September, I spoke at a uh, the Autism International Neurological Conference, neuro, Neuroscience Conference. And what a what a wonderful group of people. Very, very brilliant. I'm like the only one without a kind of medical or ABA or PhD degree. <laughs> I have an advanced degree, but it's not in that. So, um, so that was kind of fun, but really great people. But then one of the people that was there was a young man from England. His name is Graham Croton. And Graham calls himself dual heritage. He was late diagnosed with Asperger's. So he feels like he's a dual dual heritage, like neurotypical and Asperger's. Wonderful young man. He started a group in England called Project Aspie. And so they have gatherings, they have uh, all kinds of things. And they asked me, I just spoke like, I guess a week ago, um, two weeks ago, I did a Skype on Saturday. Um, for their group, so getting up very early in the morning. And I was prepared to talk about all kinds of things, but really all they wanted to know about was my book, A Real Boy, and then also Camel Milk. And they laughed, they loved it, they had the best time. And so they're dying to try it over I, there. I think it's fascinating. When, is, when are you gonna have another book come out? I'm working on it, I've already been working on it. So I, I did have um, a, a, an award given to me for um, a, a concept that I did. And so I'm formatting that right now. So wish me luck. Wish me luck. Well, I, I, you're wildly talented. So I, I, and I think that's more uh, impressive than luck. So I'm going to wish you that you have fun. Well, I'm uh, going to put my nose to the grindstone. But um, there's just so much to do in the meantime. Yes. So, but let's. You know. I, I got off the topic of the camel milk. So yeah. you got interested in the camel milk. You were the first person to bring camel milk um, to the United States. I mean, and it, it's a wild story about how you got camel milk here. But was the goal in the beginning to give it to your son for autism? Was that what it was about? Yes, the goal in the beginning was, and it was funny, I met a guy with a camel. Um, he was at a children's book fair. I was As you do, son. a guy with a As camel. As you do. <laughs> if you're extremely bored and your child is there and he doesn't need you and you're like, I'm so bored. I'm <laughs> like pain. So yeah, so that's how I found about camel milk. Okay, it's a thing. And I was like, what do they do? And he said they make soap and lotion from the milk. And by the way, frankincense and myrrh, I have some right now Ooh. because now they're my friends. Um, <laughs> Oasis Camel Dairy. You can actually go down there and ride a camel and visit them. Which I'm gonna do yeah. at some point. So anyway, that was fun. But and uh, they make lip stuff too. Brought some of that. But um, basically, I just had this feeling like okay, this could help my son. And part two could be a very good dairy substitute. And it wasn't just you hatching this idea on your own. There have been centuries of people believing in the Middle East and giving camel milk as, as something that helps people, helps their digestion, helps to take care of a wide range of different things. It wasn't like you were the first person that ever said camel, camel milk might be good for somebody's health. Actually, I didn't know that at the time. It was ah. it was really intuition. So all that work, you know, when you get a child with autism, you plunge into the science world and the this world and the diet world. All of that had led me to the point where when he said, uh, we make soap and lotion for milk. I said, what else do they do with the milk? And he said, um, well, it's given in uh, hospitals in the Middle East to premature infants because it's thought to be non-allergenic. Um, and that was the light bulb moment. Yeah. That's all I knew. Yeah. But I thought, okay, premature infants, uh, maybe close to breast milk, he might have said that. Neither of us can quite remember. But that was enough because yeah. it was already on top of that knowledge. So I didn't even know about the, right. the decades, I mean, the, the, the centuries of yeah. use. So I went home and researched it and there wasn't anything about autism, but I just kept going. And then after I kind of got booted out, me and my son had to leave the home we were living in because it didn't belong to us. This is my, <laughs> my ex-husband's. Anyway, that's another story, but um, that's gonna be in the essay. Uh, but um, so becoming single mom, I just kept on going. And then later there was an article that um, a veterinarian in the Middle East had given it, in Israel, had given it to a child with autism and they got better. So I'm like, I was on the right track. 
So that's when it all just started researching it, found out about it and gave it to my son um, and overnight 30% improvement. So ever since then, it's like such an easy accessible thing and uh, nobody was really putting the word out. So I just got this kind of offbeat, you know, girl from Virginia now knows about camels, which is very strange. I just but gave you look good with camels. Hey. I, I gotta say, all the pictures of you with the camels, it, it just it's it, it makes a certain amount of sense. Camels are fantastic. I actually just gave an interview to Farming Magazine. How interesting is that? I was like, hmm. I lived on a farm for a while with my dad. My dad is not with us anymore, but he would have probably been most proud of me giving an interview to Farming Magazine. And who would have thought that was what was coming around the bend? Well, you know, I'm from Appalachia people originally, um, Appalachian stock. And so we, in the coal mines, my grandfather was a coal miner. Um, they used donkeys in the coal mines, mules. They didn't use camels. So right. that's quite a stretch. That is quite a stretch. Oh. That's why I say who would have thought. Who would have thought? But just as an aside on the donkey thing, guess what? Donkey milk seems to have some benefit too. There's yeah. a study out of England or someplace that it seemed to have some benefit too. So the weirder the milk, perhaps the more beneficial. There you go. And the first time you came on to talk about camel milk, it was still pretty much a thing where it was hard to get. Not so much anymore. Right. There's more, the, have the laws relaxed? Is that why we're seeing it pop up in, thing, in different places? But really, just the demand has increased. So it's still really um, just kind of a niche, a niche of a niche of a niche. It's very uh, niche-y. So if you want to know where to get it, just um, email me through my site. Um, you can do that and I'll kind of tell you how to how to get it. Um, so I did just visit a, a wonderful camel farm in the Midwest, uh, a grade A dairy, fantastic operation, really nice. So I am boots on the ground and I try to uh, keep up with, with um, keep up with what's going on out there. And there, and there are several different ways you can get camel milk, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, is there raw camel milk and there's, there's, there's pasteurized? There's raw, there's pasteurized, all those kind of things. So and you can get it frozen in some cases. You can get it frozen, <clears throat> fresh. Sometimes you can drive to the farms and pick it up yourself. So kind of the laws are different state by state um, for raw. So that's why I just rather you kind of write to me and then I'll help you to see where your state are and I'll direct you that way. So I don't and have- And you even brought powdered camel milk before. Um, I have powdered camel milk. I have um, pasteurized camel milk. I have powder reconstituted camel milk. <laughs> I have camel milk chocolates, luxury and otherwise. I have lotions. I have the latest you were the camel experimental milk lipstick. There you go. Yeah. And it's got camel milk in yes, it? Yes, because it is very, very good for the skin. Now, this is a peppermint from our friends at Oasis Camel Dairy, and it's very smooth, very nice. And, and because it actually topically, it also helps with the healing. Okay. And uh, Here's some that I have yet to open. It's from the Middle now, East. Would you like to? No, no, no. Let's leave it closed. I don't want to open your thing. But yeah. um, keep it beautiful yeah, packaging. Yeah, yeah. Keep right. it. Mm -hmm. So why do we think camel milk? First of all, you said thirty percent better. So what behaviors did you see change? Um, I saw motor skills. Um, I saw eye contact. I saw language flow. I saw emotive content in the language. I saw executive functioning. Um, it was actually incredible. And at the time, my uh, my husband now, but he was dating, we were dating then, and uh -huh. he was coming over to uh, help my son get ready for school in the morning, which is an invaluable way to date someone who has a kid with autism. <laughs> I never asked him to do it, the witty guy. He's just, uh -huh. he's just that kind of guy, wonderful guy. So so he didn't he had three neurotypical children right so he was a very good observer right um so none of us neither of us expected what was going to happen so we were both staggered to see the change in him and i actually wrote a medical journal article about it which yes. i i was on here discussing that previously yeah. um and so i have um i have other people that are you know talking to me about it asking me about it so the neuro the uh, at the autism neuroscience conference that's where I kind of presented it. So in a long story short, there's been enough science come out in the past couple of years that shows it's very good in various disease areas. Yeah. And there has even been like a meta analysis that shows it's safe and effective for children with autism and food allergies. Okay. So the science is there with that and uh, that's the good part. And uh, I even published an article last year in a European thought journal called uh, Open Democracy, mm -hmm. because the, um, the Indian folks uh, in you know um, Rajasthan were having a difficult time selling the milk. I think I was on here talking yeah. about that. Well, now I'm happy to say that it's become uh, legal, it's added for sale, and they are selling uh, camel milk to autism patients in India. 
That's amazing. And this friend of mine over there, um, Dr. Um, Ilsa, uh, as she's known, uh, she actually just gave a TED Talk, and she said she uh, mentioned me in it, and that was a great honor. But quite honestly, it's time for you to have a TED Talk. Let's, oh let's be honest about that. It's it's time. You need your TED Talk. I, I haven't even looked into doing it. I probably should, but I haven't even looked into it. So if no. anybody has a shorthand to to do they, it, they need to send me a yeah, send me a because you should have a, a TED talk. Do we? Is there like an amount? Because what I remember in talking about this is that there was a, an amount that you gave your son that up until that amount it, it had benefits. If you went past a certain amount, that you didn't see as many benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, there are so many users now of camel milk. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of users and a lot of them are being added uh, these days at a rapid clip um, to the group that are using it so basically um, you know I started out with four ounces he was nine years old and I felt that was a pretty good dose based on you know I don't say dose because it's not a medicine but it was a pretty good amount based on my um, talking with a doctor that was my mentor in Israel and the adult users with Crohn's. So I gave him the same amount, four ounces, and that was turned out to be perfect for him. So when we went past that, he started getting some ticks. So okay. probably from, you know, like a, you know, a die-off effect, as we call it shorthand in the autism world, um, he probably was, you know, detoxing and, and overloading and um, things like that. So too much for him. So we dialed it back, and of course they disappeared. Fine, no negative long-term effects. So now, since people are using it as a first-line intervention, now I'm hearing people get a diagnosis, especially in other countries, and one of the first things they want is camel milk. So um, small children are doing it. So some people are actually using just little, little amounts, like teaspoons, yeah. and they actually feel like they see some response from really? that. Really? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of skeptical, but on the other hand, it's their child. The child could be very sensitive, so some people undoubtedly are seeing that. Um, other people are using more and it's fine. So really, it's super individual. It's just like however their immune system is dysfunctioning, uh, then that's kind of correlating to how much camel milk you need to give. And not, it's super individual. And not to get too sciencey, but do we know what it is in the camel milk that, we know that the makeup of it is different than say cow's milk, but do we know what it is that's, that's different that makes it beneficial? Well, the nutritional data, there's some new nutritional data out and when you test for the, the vitamins and nutrients that is required by a label here in the United States, interestingly, that's almost identical, uh, raw and pasteurized, and then it's very, very similar to the contents of cow milk. I mean, there's things that are different though. It's lower in certain fats, it's better for you in many ways than cow milk. However, um, the raw and pasteurized with those kind of things, it's about the same, um, which was good, good to know. But the things in camel milk that may be effective are not really um, super quantified yet in terms of autism. Um, however, it's probably the, um, the enzymes may be one. It has lysosome, it has um, all kinds of great enzymes in it, um, fats, um, things like that. Um, and here's another thing. It, it almost works like, to me, IVIG. If you know what IVIG is, intravenous immunoglobulin, um, it seems to me to have the same effect, only camel milk is you know, $15 a bottle, IBIG can be $20,000 an infusion. Yeah. So um, there's obviously, you know, a, a crossover effect there on the immune system. And so with the, um, the antibodies that uh, camel milk contains, um, the immunoglobulins having, it, to me, that's probably a big part of it because if we see that effect in IBIG and we see it in camel milk, there's probably a similar effect. Interesting. And it, so that it, helps yeah. to boost your immune system. And yeah. we're finding more and more information about how autism is related to the immune system. Right. Um, so fascinating. And again, you had said earlier that if this is found to be safe for people who have other allergies. Right. Because a lot, I have a milk allergy. There are a lot of people on this planet that cannot handle cow's milk for right. whatever reason. And... Uh, so what a wonderful thing that those people tend to not have any issue with camel milk. Right. Powerful and, thing. And the one thing that I also say is best to do is I always tell people, please remove your child from all other dairy products first because you want to know what, what the, the bounce effect is or the negative effect, whatever you get. Yeah. Because if you take them off regular dairy and put them right on camel milk, you're not going to know was the regular dairy causing the problem. They're going to improve after that. Or was it the addition of the camel milk? 
Okay. So that's what I advise. Put a put a, at least I like to put a six to eight week window on those uses. Okay.